Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with part three of this spirit-led teaching. The overwhelming knowledge of Christ is the salvation of Christ. And when we're walking in the, the overwhelming knowledge of Christ, which is the fruit of salvation, it overwhelms us. Because it separates us from everything we thought was in the flesh and brings us to what is in the spirit. It takes us to what was unknown and to us spiritually, it becomes very known, which is God the Father through Christ. And we in that original state, who we are in that original state and what we fell from in that original state as Christ men and women, it is absolutely amazing. The gospel, you cannot miss the gospel because if you miss faith, you're in sin, sin is going to judge you. It's going to lead you to be judged to death because all sin has been judged to death. Okay. All sin has been judged to death. This is why we have to go from the law of sin and death under the commandments to the law of life, which is in Christ Jesus, which is grace. You see, the law of life is in Christ. There is no life outside of Christ. Anything outside of Christ, you, you're existing, but you're not living. You're existing, but you're not living. Only in Christ and as Christ, only in Christ are we alive and as Christ lives through us, do we eternally live by the, by the power of Christ. Okay. Let us go to Romans 8, 1, 8, 1 through 4. Romans 8, chapter, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. 1. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. But you can't stop there. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you see, there is a condition there. There is no condemnation to them who, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you have to, you have to walk in Christ. You can't follow Jesus. There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now you have to have revelation on that. Two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. When you hear Christ Jesus, that means supernatural. That means supernatural. Two, let's go to it one more time. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, he is the law of the spirit of life, had made me free from the law of sin and death. Three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh condemned sin in the flesh now sin is not flesh sin is spirit but condemned sin in the flesh because sin was manifesting to the flesh condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Well, who fulfills the righteousness of the law in us? Christ. Because Christ is the righteousness of God. Therefore, he's the righteousness of the law. Don't let anyone dupe you into being under the law or thinking you have to fulfill, the, you can't fulfill the law. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. Under the law, you are debtors. We are debtors under the law. Once in Christ and will fill with the Spirit in Christ through us by revelation of the Spirit, which is the fruit, is that debt paid in full. Only then is that debt paid in full. That the righteousness of the, of the law, well, who is the righteousness of God? Christ. 
that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay. Why? Because we are debtors, not to the flesh, but to the spirit. Let us go to Romans, uh, same chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 11 through 16, 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, now you see Jesus didn't raise himself up from the dead. The spirit that was dwelling in Jesus raised him up from the dead. What spirit was dwelling in Jesus? The same spirit that's dwelling in us. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. 12. Therefore, brethren, once you're in that risen state, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to the spirit, but to the spirit. We owe God a debt, but once we're risen to that new state, it is Christ himself that pays that debt. He, he, when we're filled with the spirit, then that debt is paid. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we do the spirit, do put to death the deeds of the body, then we shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Because we've entered into sonship. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We call unto the Lord in distress. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the, uh, the children of God. There's no, there's no misconception in that. When you're born of the Spirit, Christ's Spirit will, will bear witness with your, your spirit that you are a child of God. And by that confirmation will come all divine revelation. You'll be able to separate light from darkness because you now be in the way of light. So you'll be separated from everything that's outside of the light. Now, everything outside of the light is not evil. The material world is outside of the light, but it's not evil. God created the material world. But dark, uh, Satan is out of darkness, so we have to be able to separate light from darkness in that aspect. But just because it's outside of Christ does not mean it's evil. The material world is outside of Christ. There's the material world and the spiritual world. The material world is not evil. Christ created the material world. But uh, Satan, who is out of darkness, he is evil. So that's the darkness we have to separate from the light. I think uh, so many people misconstrued that and they start calling the world evil and everything in it evil. No, the world is not evil. The darkness in the world is evil. But the world itself is not evil because God created it. The material aspect of the world is not evil. Because God created it. It is the darkness that manifested into the world that is evil, which is sin. That's the darkness that light separates you from. And that brings us to a conclusion of part three of this teaching. Love you in Christ. See you in part four.